Okay, now I want to introduce what may be a new idea or an extension of one that you've seen before. And that's looking at the thermodynamic definition of stagnation states and properties. And this is going to be a very useful concept when we start looking at propulsion systems. Now, in fluids, we used stagnation pressure all the time, right? Especially when we were talking about Bernoulli's equation. I'll use C for velocity, typically in thermodynamic problems, because V usually means volume. Now, you remember that this is what we came up with. An incompressible flow. So recall what this means is that the stagnation pressure PT is the pressure which would be achieved if the fluid was brought to rest without friction, so if it slowed down and stopped at a stagnation point. And we want to generalize this idea to thermodynamic and compressible flows. So following MIT open courseware, if we have a blunt body, from our study of fluids, we know there will be a stagnation point here on the nose. So if the fluid is at state 1 out here and state 2 at the stagnation point, in the steady flow here, if there's no heat transfer, the first law says that, well, CPT2 plus C, C2 squared over 2 equals CPT1 plus C1 squared over 2. Now, this quantity that's conserved between these two locations is called the stagnation temperature. So this is T sub T, and it's T plus C squared over 2 CP in general. Now we can do a quick check here and say, well, look, TT1 is T1 plus C1 squared over 2 CP, and TT2 from the definition still is T2 plus C2 squared over 2 CP. And you can see, looking at this equation, that it's identically satisfied that TT1 equals TT2. Now, using the definition of Mach number, which is velocity over speed of sound, and the definition of speed of sound in a perfect gas, which is gamma r t square root, then we can write that TT is T plus M squared gamma R T over 2 CP. And so grouping the terms with T together, we get 1 plus gamma R M squared over 2 CP. So gamma R over 2 CP is basically a combination of properties of the gas since R is CP minus CV we can write that TT over T is 1 plus gamma over 2 CP minus CV over CP times M squared And if we simplify, we can get that TT over T is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 M squared. So this is for a steady adiabatic
no external work process. Basically, we get that TT is constant then. And this equation allows us to relate the total or the stagnation temperature to the actual or static temperature uh, via the Mach number. So it's convenient to also define the stagnation enthalpy, which is defined in exactly the same way. So that HT over H is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 M squared as well. Now, in the absence of heat transfer or shaft work, therefore, stagnation enthalpy, HT, is conserved. And you can think of this HT as being like the enthalpy, basically, plus the kinetic energy. Now, let's revisit the concept of stagnation pressure. In incompressible flow, the energy equation, the first law of thermodynamics, is decoupled from the fluid flow equations, the, the momentum equation and the conservation of mass. And so that previous definition of stagnation pressure, Pt equals P plus one half rho V squared, is adequate. But what about in a compressible flow? Now, the energy equation matters. And there's going to be some further restrictions on the conservation of stagnation pressure. So for enthalpy or temperature, we saw that the stagnation quantity was conserved for an adiabatic process with no external work. But for pressure, it's conserved for a reversible adiabatic process with external work. So there's an extra restriction. No external work. So this is a combination of the conditions for the conservation of stagnation enthalpy and stagnation pressure in incompressible flow. And then since, recall that a reversible plus an adiabatic flow is an isentropic flow. So, since we can view the stagnation properties as imaginary stagnation states, pretending what would happen to the properties if the fluid were brought to rest following the appropriate type of process, we can then use these relations uh, that we developed for isentropic processes a couple of minutes ago to get a definition for stagnation pressure in a compressible fluid. So if we go to P2 over P1, is T2 over T1, gamma over gamma minus 1, then we can say that PT over P is TT over T to the gamma over gamma minus 1. And since TT over T is 1 plus gamma minus, minus 1 over 2 times the Mach number squared, we get that Pt over P is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 Mach number squared to the power of gamma over gamma minus 1. Now this might look awfully different than Pt equals P plus 1 half rho V squared, but we can show how in the incompressible case, uh, this reduces to the same equation. So when we're talking about incompressible flow, we're talking about low Mach number flows, right? So let's look at the incompressible limit of this equation. So the stagnation pressure equals the pressure times 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times the Mach number squared, gamma over gamma minus 1. We can rewrite this as P is 1 plus, bring the 1 half out front, separate out the gamma minus 1, and write Mach number squared as the velocity squared over gamma RT. Since P 
equals rho RT is perfect gas law, and therefore P over rho is RT. We can write this as PT equals P times 1 plus 1 half gamma minus 1 over gamma rho over P C squared times gamma over gamma minus 1. Now we need to pull a little bit of math out and do a Taylor series expansion about C or the equals 0. And we'll just look at the first two terms. So this is an expansion of the form 1 plus x to the n, right? 1 plus x to the n. And that is 1 plus nx plus n times n minus 1 over 2 x squared plus dot dot dot. It's an infinite series, right? So let's just chop this here and drop everything except these first two terms. Then, what we get is that the PT is approximately P times 1 plus gamma over gamma minus 1 to the 1 half times 1 half gamma minus 1 over gamma, that's N rho over P C squared plus dot 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 dot. And so these terms cancel and this pressure cancels and we get PT is approximately P plus one half rho C squared in the low speed incompressible limit. So this is ultimately where PT equals P plus one half rho V squared being conserved comes from. It's a simplification of the full compressible form. So one final note on this is that all of these definitions assume a steady process to bring the fluid to rest. 